Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Jaden Sancho loves the prospect of joining Manchester United this summer. The deal could cost £77 million for Jaden Sancho. The deal has been agreed. Jaden Sancho's already agreed a contract and the personal terms have been agreed. Fabrizio Romano recently said that Man United are interested in Jaden Sancho, but he said there's been no official talks or bid yet. He says Dortmund are ready to sell Sancho for around £77 million in the summer transfer window. Not so long ago, it said that Jadon Sancho's representatives are more confident than ever that Sancho will join Man United this summer. Borussia Dortmund have already admitted that they'll sell Sancho for the right price this summer and Dortmund's CEO did reveal that the club will discuss exceptional offers for the winner. The Manchester Evening News said the other week that Sancho was pushing for a transfer out of Dortmund. It also said that Man United could use Jesse Lingard to buy Sancho. Because obviously... Solskjaer's made his final decision on Jesse Lingard's future. He wants to sell Lingard, and Lingard obviously wants a permanent move away from Man United. Uh, Borussia Dortmund did confirm earlier on this season that they've got a gentleman's agreement with Sancho, which would allow him to depart Dortmund this summer. Uh, Liverpool have been interested in him. Chelsea have been in for him. And Bayern Munich, not so long ago, entered the race. But yeah, Sancho expects to complete a move to Man United in the summer transfer window. If we get Sancho, it'll be very good business by Man United because Sancho would dramatically improve us. He's predominantly a right winner. He's still young. He's got a lot of development in him. He's good at creating chances and he would assure us goals. Plus, he's got a very, very good friendship with Rashford. They talk to each other a lot. And he would exceed expectations in the Premier League. We was very close to getting Sancho last summer. But the reason we didn't get him is because we was reluctant to meet Borussia Dortmund's 108 million valuation. We was only willing to pay so much up front. But last summer it said that the personal terms had been agreed, the agent fees had been agreed, the wages had been agreed and the contracts had been agreed. Dortmund made it clear to us that we had until the 10th of August to sign the player. We missed out on that deadline so Sancho remained at Dortmund. Fabrizio Romano has spoken a lot about the Jadon Sancho transfer saga. Um, he said a few weeks ago that Jadon Sancho would be 100% happy to join Man United this summer because he did mention that he was keen on a move to Man United last summer. And Bill's Christian Fark spoken a lot about the Jadon Sancho transfer saga. This has been Sancho's fourth season at Dortmund. Dortmund paid just £7 million for him from Man City. And he's got a contract with Dortmund until 2023. Now, obviously, you know the news on Harry Kane. Solskjaer is pushing to sign Harry Kane. And Solskjaer's open to selling Anthony Martial to free up space for Harry Kane in the squad. Daniel Levy 
who's Tottenham's chairman, he doesn't want Tottenham to sell Harry Kane. Daniel Levy was recently furious with Harry Kane for going public with his desire to leave last week. Harry Kane had an interview with Gary Neville regarding his future. Harry Kane did say last week that he will decide on his own future, not Daniel Levy. But yeah, Harry Kane put a transfer request in. Man United, Man City and Chelsea have all contacted his representatives. He says Tottenham were demanding £150 million. I'm very sceptical that they'd get £150 million. I think at the most they'd get £120 million. Can Man United afford £120 million for Harry Kane? Uh, Ryan Mason, who's Tottenham's interim manager at the moment, he dismissed suggestions that Harry Kane asked to leave Tottenham. He says uh, last week as well that Man United and Man City were set to offer Harry Kane £80 million in wages. Uh, Football Insider also said that Man United are prepared to offer Anthony Martial and Jesse Lingard in a swap deal for Kane, because it did say that Tottenham are keen on a players plus cash deal for Kane. Uh, Chelsea have recently launched a bid for Harry Kane. It said they're willing to offer Tammy Abraham and Ariza Belega as part of a swap deal for Kane. Kane has ruled out a move abroad. He wants to remain in the Premier League. I think he wants to play alongside Kevin De Bruyne at Man City. But yeah, uh, we've got a chance of signing Harry Kane. You know, we have done business with Tottenham before. Uh, we got Michael Carrick off them a lot of years ago. And we also got Dimitar Berbatov off them. A few weeks ago, Harry Kane did say that he's ready to ask Tottenham to listen to transfer offers this summer. And it did say that the Glazers were planning to sanction a £90 million bid. Earlier on this season, Kane said that he wants to win team trophies. He said that after Tottenham's Cowbow Cup final defeat to Man City, Tottenham have not won a trophy for 13 years. David Einstein spoke about Harry Kane earlier on this season, like he updated you on. He said that Harry Kane's unhappy at Tottenham. He wants to leave. He said he's committed to Tottenham whilst he's there, but he wants to win the biggest trophies and he's obviously not been experiencing this at Tottenham. Kane has won the Golden Boot a couple of times, reflecting on his good performances. Harry Kane has been a long-serving player at Tottenham. He's been with them for 17 years. He's been in their senior squad since 2009. You know, Kane came up Tottenham's academy. He's got a contract with Tottenham until 2024. He's had loan spells before with Leighton Orient, Millwall, Norwich and Leicester. The reasons I take Harry Kane at Manchester United is because he's well proven in the Premier League. He's a prolific goal scorer. He'd fit in our team perfectly and he's regarded as one of the best strikers in the world. Solskjaer has refused to rule out Man United signing 
a new striker. We still want a striker despite Edison Cavani signing a one-year contract not so long ago. Now, could Cristiano Ronaldo make a return to Man United in the summer transfer window? The Athletic recently said that Solskjaer remains in touch with Ronaldo. It says Man United have been in talks with Ronaldo over a sensational return. Juventus fear that they could genuinely lose Ronaldo. Earlier on this season, it said that Cristiano Ronaldo held talks with Man United regarding a two-year contract. Gazzetta dello Sport already said that we've made contact with Cristiano Ronaldo's agent over a return this summer, and it said Juventus will accept £26 million. Now, we had Ronaldo for six years. We had him from 2003 to 2009. Um, when he was with us, he won three Premier League titles. He won the Champions League. He won the League Cup. He won the FA Cup. And he won the FIFA Club World Cup. We paid just £12 million for him from Sporting Lisbon back in 2003. Obviously sold him in 2009 to Real Madrid for £80 million. Uh, Ronaldo enjoyed like 9 or 10 years with Real Madrid. And obviously Juventus got him in 2018 for around £100 million. So he's been at Juventus a few years now. His current contract with Juventus expires next year. Ronaldo has won 32 major trophies in his playing career. So got a great pedigree as a player and he's won five Ballon d'Ors. I would take him back at Manchester United despite him being what the age of 36 because he's regarded as one of the best players in the world. Um, obviously, you know the news on Declan Rice from West Ham. Uh, Solskjaer wants him. Declan Rice wants West Ham to get Jesse Lingard on a permanent transfer. Uh, reports came out the other month saying that Declan Rice was interested in joining Man United. And it said he asked Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw about life at Old Trafford. It says earlier on this season that West Ham were demanding £100 million. Pounds. I take Declan Rice in a breath at Man United because he's predominantly a holding midfielder and Man United have been searched for a holding midfielder and also can be deployed as a centre-half. Declan Rice is still young, he's got a lot of development in him. He's well proven in the Premier League. I reckon Declan Rice is worth from between 60 to 70 million pounds. He's been at West Ham a long time now. You know, he's been with them around seven years now. Got a contract at West Ham until 2024. Darren Fletcher did say earlier on this season that Declan Rice asked about Man United when he was on national duty with England. Uh, Solskjaer has demanded three new transfers in order for Man United to challenge for the Premier League title next season. Because we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, which is eight years ago now. We have won 20 titles in total, 13 of them are Premier League titles. Next season is going to be huge for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and 
he is aware of that. Next season, Solskjaer has got to exceed expectations, you know, if he is to remain Manchester United manager, because if things start to go wrong next season, then there's a very, very good chance he will be sacked. I've already said, you know, Solskjaer is not the long-term manager for Man United and I presume a lot of United fans will agree with me on that aspect. But I've got to give Solskjaer credit because I didn't expect him to do as well as he has done. He has done well, you know, to say the squad he was left with, left with when he got appointed in as Man United manager. And I think Solskjaer is aware that the summer transfer window is huge for him and Manchester United in general. It's very imperative that Solskjaer gets the players he wants to recommend in in the summer transfer window because I don't think he's been backed enough so far as Manchester United manager because he hasn't got all the players that he wanted to recommend in and in that aspect, the blame stems from the board. The summer transfer window will be Ollie's fifth transfer window as permanent Man United manager. But Solskjaer's made it clear that he wants good backing in the summer transfer window. And you know what? I'm expecting him to get the backing he deserves because we've got John Murtough. He's our director of football and was the right decision by the club getting a director of football in. We've also got Darren Fletcher. He's our technical director and he knows the club through thick and thin. And we've got Matt Judge and Matt Judge has been part of the club for a long time. I've... We can attract players to the highest level because obviously we've got Champions League football for next season. I'm expecting some players to leave Man United in the summer transfer window. But Solskjaer did recently say there may not be many outgoings in the summer transfer window. You know, maybe just two, three or four players could leave in the summer transfer window instead of seven, eight, nine or ten. You know, there is still Deadwood at Manchester United and I've already gone through with you the players that I think need to go. I think Phil Jones definitely needs to go. Brandon Williams needs to go, not because he's a bad player, he's just not getting enough opportunities at Man United. He's our third choice left back. So if we loan Williams out, he'll gain more experience and he'll get a lot more opportunities. I think um, we need to get rid of Diego Delo permanently. You know, he's out on loan with Milan at the moment. We need to get rid of Sergio Romero because he's like, what, our third or fourth choice keeper now. We also need to get rid of Lee Grant. I recall him making one appearance for Man United. I think that was against Astana a few years ago. Uh, I think we got him on a free from Stoke. Um, I think we need to offload Nemanja Matic as well because he isn't one of our first choice midfielders and as you all know I've always had my strong reservations about him. I think one matter we need to offload him as well because he doesn't really get in our team. Solskjaer did recently say that no decision has yet been made on Juan Mata's future. Uh, a decision will be made at the end of the season. Uh, Anthony Martial, I think we definitely need to offload him because uh, he's no longer good enough to represent the club and Martial has been out of form for the vast majority of this season but he has been out of an injury for a while and he remains out now. Solskjaer recently confirmed that. But the players that we do sell in the summer transfer window will generate money and it will help us with our rebuilding process. Obviously, there's a lot of players that will stay at Man United in the summer transfer window. And I reckon there's quite a few players that have got long-term futures at the club. 
Um, Dean Henderson will stay. He's obviously our number one goalkeeper now. We made the right decision putting him as number one because he's been very consistent in a lot of the games he's been in goal for this season. And plus he's got that experience behind him. Uh, De Gea could stay potentially past the summer, but I don't think he'll be with us long term from now. You know, he's already been a long servant at the club. You know, he's endured 10 years at Manchester United. He is our second choice keeper now, De Gea, but Solskjaer's confirmed he will be in goal for the Europa League final against Villarreal. I think De Gea's been in goal for all the Europa League games, you know, building up to this final against Villarreal. Uh, Luke Shaw, um, he'll also stay with us. You know, Luke Shaw's been our best player this season. And Luke Shaw still remains our first choice left back despite the arrival of Tellez last summer. Shaw's had a good career at Man United despite his injuries. He's been at the club now over six years. Um, Eric Bailly, obviously we now know that he's staying with us because the other week he signed a new contract with Man United until 2024. There is an option of a further year. Did we make a mistake giving him that new contract? He is a good centre-half, but he's just too injury-prone. I certainly prefer Bay ahead of Lindelof. I think he goes well alongside Maguire. It's better than Lindelof and Maguire. Uh, Harry Maguire, he'll also stay with us as well. Obviously, he can't play at the moment because he's got ligament damage in his ankle. He sustained the ankle injury in our 3-1 win against Aston Villa. Um, he is a doubt for the Europa League final. Solskjaer confirmed that he is a big miss, is Maguire, because defensively we are shambolic without him. Maguire has been consistent in some of his games, but he's also enjoyed poor games at Man United. Um, and Juan Bissaka... He'll also stay with us as well. I reckon he's got a long-term future at Man United. I think Anwan Bissaka is one of the best right-backs we've had since Gary Neville. And I think he can emulate into the next Gary Neville. You know, recently he's been showing more attacking intent and he's been getting into good positions. He's been putting good crosses into the box. And defensively, Anwan Bissaka has always been superb. I think Lindelof will stay with us potentially past the summer, but... Doesn't have a long-term future at Man United, as you are all aware. I've got my strong reservations about Lindelof. I reckon Donny van der Beek uh, will stay with us potentially past the summer. Even though early on this season there was rumours of him going, because obviously he hasn't been given enough starts at Man United. It did say um, not so long ago that we will reject any offers for van der Beek in the summer transfer window, so reflecting on that, we are reluctant to let him go, because Solskjaer has got big plans for him, but he is a good player in general, he's van der Beek, so we've got to use him more, uh, Bruno Fernandes, obviously we know he'll stay, uh, Bruno Fernandes is set to sign a new contract, at Manchester United, like I updated you yesterday, he says Bruno Fernandes is close to agreeing, a new £200,000 a week contract after Bruno Fernandes admitted he's happy with the progress of Solskjaer's team. So, yeah, Bruno Fernandes' wages are going to be doubled because in his current contract at the moment, he's on £100,000 a week. Uh, Fernandes recently won Player of the Year and he's won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. Uh, Mason Greenwood, he'll obviously stay with us as well. You know, he's been superb in a lot of his games since he broke into our senior squad. I reckon Greenwood's got a long-term future at Man United. You know, Marcus Rashford, he'll also stay with us as well. We need to keep Marcus Rashford out on the left because that's where he's more effective. And we know that Edison Cavani is staying for next season because he signed a one-year contract not so long ago. I'm glad he's staying for next season, because he has made a fantastic impact since he's come in. Um, Mad Dalla Traore is obviously going to be staying with us. Um, he looks a good asset for the first-team squad. Uh, Daniel James as, well, James as well, I think he'll be t 
potentially stay past the summer. But yeah, the big decisions are set to be made in the summer transfer window. I think the summer transfer window opens on the 9th of June. But um, like I say, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he is our best manager since Ferguson. Um, he does deserve at least another season at Manchester United. You know, this has been Solskjaer's second full season at the club. He's been Manchester United manager now around 29 months, which is over two years. And reflecting now on his being at the club, he has gained some managerial experience and he's learned quite quite a bit on the job and he's tried a few different elements you know he's like tried different formations he's rotated the squad a lot you know I do like the way by the way that Ole has promoted the youth earlier on this season it said that Solskjaer agreed a three-year contract worth 30 million it's likely to be two years with an option of an extra one I think Ole's just got under a year left on his current three-year contract now, I do have my concerns about Ole. My two biggest concerns, like I've said before, is that he hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager. And his decision-making also concerns me. Because in a lot of his games at Man United, he has been tactically naive. But there again, there's been some games where he's showed tactical flexibility. Uh, before Solskjaer was with us, he was at Mulder. Um, he won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, but they're not a big club. He had two spells at Mulder. And at one point he was at Cardiff and his record at Cardiff was absolutely disastrous. Ollie did manage the Man United reserve team for a couple of years so he watched some of this team grow and develop. We adore Solskjaer a lot because he is a club legend. He enjoyed 11 years as a player for Man United. He flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. But obviously, there's a lot of United fans that are all in and they believe that he needs more time at the club. Obviously, a lot of United fans have been demanding Oli out and they've heavily criticised him. Obviously, they've got their reasons behind it. But, um, like I've said, there is a lot of positives regarding Oli. You know, he's done well in a lot of aspects this season. You know, he's got us to the Europa League final. That's our priority now. You know, it's Solskjaer's first major final and it's our eighth European final. Solskjaer's looking to win his first trophy as Manchester United manager. You know, he got us to the FA Cup quarter final this season, also got us to the EFL Cup semi final. Got a very good away record in the Premier League. We are unbeaten in our last 25 Premier League away games, which is good. You know, Solskjaer has got a second this season. That's not an achievement, an achievement, but it's pretty good. Just shows that there's been progress made from last season, because uh, last season we finished third. And last season Solskjaer got us to three semi-finals and he got us qualification for the Champions League. And he has made good signings as Man United manager so far. He's spent almost £300 million and... He's also got rid of a lot of players since he's come in. So they are the positives regarding Ole. But Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Man United it was going to be a massive job, despite him knowing the club through thick and thin. Don't forget Solskjaer is inheriting players from other managerial eras. So anyway, I will be on for the match reaction after the Wolves Man United game. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.